Hey guys! I'm so sorry my video is a little bit later than I anticipated. Um, I know each time I was on to you and I uh, explained that I wasn't feeling the best yesterday and I really wanted to do this um, feeling good um, and I feel much better today so thank you so much for your patience. Um, yeah, so I am glad to be doing this as well on the day of a full moon. I think there's um, really good energy going around at the moment and really good clearing energy and grounding energy, which is actually what I'm basing uh, my class on. Um, so I've chosen to do a grounding uh, yoga class for a vata imbalance. I'm dedicating this to my partner who has never done yoga before, but I've gotten him into meditation recently. So I'm hoping that I get him into yoga as well. Um, and he, I did an Ayurveda questionnaire on him recently. I told you guys that I am um, trained in Ayurvedic therapies um, as a spa therapist. And uh, yeah, so he's a very strong pitta but with a vata imbalance at the moment. So needing lots of grounding because it's um, head energy, as you know, um, space and air. So we're needing to kind of bring that down. So that's what I've chosen to do with this class. And um, so I'll be, excuse me while I'm not making eye contact as well here. I'm reading my notes, which I'll be doing throughout the class. I hope you don't mind um, because I'll forget stuff otherwise. I also have baby brain at the moment, so that doesn't help. <laughs> um, so the class is going to be really calm and flowy uh, with a focus on standing poses to stabilize and ground and on balancing poses to help to focus the mind and root to Mother Earth. So I've kind of done low lighting with just my salt lamp and my um, my little diffuser. Uh, that usually helps people with fata just to kind of calm and just calm the mind and um, as you guys taught us if the mind is calm then the body is if the body is calm then the mind is it goes hand in hand and uh, that brings us back to the harmony of mind body and soul in yoga um, so I have chosen poses also that are um, easy for me to do just because I'm obviously seven months pregnant I officially hit uh, third trimester today so <laughs> I'm, pr I'm proud I guess to be doing this um, so late in pregnancy um, and I couldn't have done that without all of your help you've been absolutely amazing so I just want to take this opportunity as well to just say thank you all so much all of you you've just been fantastic um, I've told so many people about you and I've shared I've shared it on um, my social media as well um, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to send a couple of people your way. It's been fantastic. Um, so yeah, I've chosen poses that are easier for me to do um, at this stage. And um, yeah, I'll be obviously modifying some of them still, even at that. So I will point out to you where I am modifying them. Um, so please excuse my alignment. I know is not great at the moment. Um, and it's something that I do endeavour to uh, perfect once my baby's born. Um, I'll be uh, maybe even get a, a private one to one tutor to just help me to tweak the things that, you know, I couldn't do over the last month. And um, so uh, just so you go, you guys know that I know it's it's not exactly where it needs to be to start teaching just yet. Um, I've also um, brought in some aspects of my own uh past experience teaching um of, of what i've learned to teach sorry in meditation um and as i say i've brought in ayurveda as well so i hope that you guys enjoy that and don't mind me bringing those in um they all go hand in hand anyway and um i thought it would be nice to put my own little touch on the class and um, also I've created my own sequence of flow. So um, because I've chosen specific uh, poses that uh, are good for grounding avata and also are um, easy to do in pregnancy, I've had to create my own sequence and have one flow into the other, which is what Vinyasa is all about. So um, I hope my sequence is um, 
good enough and that um that that's okay to do that was a question that um I, I should have asked earlier actually but uh, it just came up as I was prepping and I thought okay well it makes sense and I'm sure you guys will tell me if it doesn't so <laughs> um I've also used some other little bits and pieces that I like to use uh, when I'm doing treatments um as a spa therapist and when I'm doing uh, I'm qualified in cer a certain energy healings as well so I use these bits and pieces in that and I also use them in meditation so I've just got some essential oils this one in particular is very good for grounding it's Siberian fur so I've got that in my diffuser got it on my feet and um I'll have it all over my partner when he's doing the class as well uh then I've got some uh crystals um that I like to use as well just for their energetic energetic properties so I've got amber which is very good for the sacral chakra and I've got black tourmaline which is fantastic for your root chakra so they're the two your base chakra so they're, they're the two um the two uh chakras as you guys know that are lowest point and they're they're the two that are mainly associated with grounding the root one in particular but um the sacral often comes into that as well so i'm gonna start off with just a little mantra um i know we always do om um but i'm gonna start off with lamb if that's okay just because again that is uh the mantra that's associated with the root chakra again for grounding so i'm just going to do this while we're actually sitting here while i'm right in front of you so just sitting cross-legged having having your hands in a chin mudra so just like this nice and simple um this gesture so it's very, this gesture in particular actually this mudra in protect in particular is very good for stress and anxiety so you just place your hands on your knees, palms facing up, closing the eyes, focusing on the breath, feeling your body starting to relax, feeling the spine nice and straight. We always have a natural curve, but as straight as possible, shoulders back, chin parallel to the floor. Taking a nice deep inhale through the nose. Lam and again, in through the nose. time again inhale through the nose and exhale Lam. so again it's just a nice little start to uh, the practice just to start off with the grounding. So I'm going to um, start off with our asanas now. So just bring yourself to the top of your mat. And again, this is a little technique that I, I use before I do sun salutations. So it's very grounding. And again, fantastic for balancing any vata energy. So what you wanna do is just stand still, feet, flat on the floor, making sure that they're about hip width apart. Throughout the session, I'll probably have my hip or have my feet a little bit wider than that. But again, that's just to allow for baby. Um, yeah, so feet flat on the floor and spine nice and straight. Arms down by your sides, naturally. Chin parallel to the floor. And I just do a little sway. So just a little sway forward, okay? You can start to feel your heels come back, come up off the mat at the back. You're almost leaning on your toes. 
and you, just before you feel that tipping point, you bring yourself back to your center of gravity. And then you can do it backwards, so you sway back onto your heels and then you feel your toes lifting up. And again, just before that tipping point, you bring yourself back to your center of gravity. I just give my, my legs, as you can see, just a little bounce, just a little shake. I just feel that that brings you, it, it, it makes you very aware of where your center of gravity is and it's fantastically grounding if you do have a lot of head energy and if you're needing to kind of just relax and calm. So I like to do that before I start. So your feet are basically planted after doing that little exercise. And we're going to start off now with our just simple sun salutation A. So I should have mentioned as well earlier that I've designed this class for a beginner. Um, as I say, I've dedicated it to my partner, so I'd love for him to try it out later. And it is his first time, so um, I've kept it nice and simple for that reason also. Um, so we're just going to do a nice simple sun salutation A. So feet planted on the inhale, bringing your arms up over your head all the way up like you're reaching for the sky and then dropping down forward bend if you can touch the ground fantastic palms even on the ground on the next inhale you look up next exhale back to a plank position and bringing your body downwards so for everybody else, they can go flat on the floor. For me, I can't lean on my tummy right now. <laughs> so I'm just going to stay here. So that was the exhale. The next inhale, all the way back. And exhale out into a downward facing dog. Making sure your arms are straight, your back is straight, your head's tucked, your knees and hips are aligned, your feet are facing forward. You can push your heels back as well, you really feel the stretch on the back of the legs. You can actually hold this for a couple of breaths, don't forget to breathe. Pushing the tummy out when you inhale, bringing it back in when you exhale. On the next inhale, bring your feet forward to your hands. Looking forward and then your exhale is down, dropping the head down. Next inhale is all the way up. And then exhale, arms down by your side or into your prayer position. So from where you're standing, we're going to do that again. So from your prayer position, inhale all the way up. Exhale all the way down. Inhale, look up. Exhale. Back to your plank position, lower the body all the way down. Inhale, arch back. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, feet forward, look up. Exhale, drop forward. Inhale, arms all the way up. Exhale, prayer position. So we're gonna go again. Inhale, all the way up. 
Exhale all the way down. Inhale, legs back. Plank. Sorry, I made a mistake there. It's supposed to look up first and then back to plank. Then look all the way up, inhale. Exhale back to the downward facing dog. Inhale, legs forward, look up. Exhale down. Inhale all the way up. Exhale, prayer position. Okay, so the next pose that we're going to do is warrior two. So it strengthens and stretches um, your ankles, your legs, and it also increases stamina. So anything to do with strengthening or stretching the legs, very good for again, rooting and grounding. So again, Samasahiti, just starting at the top of your mat. What you do, inhale. Bring your one leg back. So I'm starting with my right leg, making sure that your heels are aligned, that your left leg is facing forward, that your right, sorry, your left foot is facing forward, and that your right foot is facing a little bit inwards. And then you bring the arms up, making sure that your shoulders are dropped. And that they're straight, they're parallel with the floor. You can watch your left hand with your eyes and in your mind's eye, watch your right hand. And as you exhale, bring your knee forward, making sure that it's in line with your ankles, that it's not going over, it's not going too far ahead and holding the pose here. We're going to hold for five breaths. You can count your own breaths here now as well. You can get start to get used to counting your own breaths with the asanas. After five breaths, bring your arms down. And you can switch your feet. So you're pointing your right leg forward now and you're having your left foot just a little bit inwards, yeah? And you've got your ankles aligned. So exact same on the other side, making sure that your arms are parallel to the floor. You're looking on your right side this time. And again, making sure through your mind's eye that your left arm isn't dropping. Nice deep inhale and then exhale into moving your knee forward and having it in alignment with your ankle. After five, you can drop the arms, bring the legs back, Sam Tahiti, front of your mat. Ah, 
So the next pose is the tree pose. Fantastic for pelvic stability and for strengthening uh, the legs as well. So again, fantastic for grounding any vata energy. So with this one, uh, you should find a drishti, which is your focal point. So anything maybe in the room that's like straight ahead or on the floor, anything that you can find, you can just focus on for a couple of minutes, right? So standing again, hips and feet aligned. So your feet are hip width apart. Find your drishti, find your grounding, your rooting. Just even give yourself a little bit of a bounce maybe and think of that little movement that we did at the beginning, the Samstahiti, where we did the grounding into the, into the mat and kind of bring yourself back to that energy. Now what you can do is start off by lifting one leg and bring the sole of the foot to the inner thigh of the other leg. Make sure it's nice and comfortable that you can hold it for a couple of seconds. I'm starting with my right leg. I'm very aware of my left leg right now. I'm pushing my big toe into the mat to help with stability. And I'm focusing on my drishti. As long as I focus on that one point, nothing can distract me. Nice deep inhale. Bring the arms all the way up. You can't see now, but my arms are in, my hands are in prayer position up above the head. And I'm stretching them right up, elongating the spine, keeping my gaze straight ahead, not dropping the head. You can pull in the tummy, suck in the tummy. I can't do that too much right now. <laughs> if you find that your right leg is coming in a little bit, just externally rotate the hip to keep your hips in alignment. So this is a fantastic rooting, grounding, Pose. It's one of the best ones for doing exactly that. It always reminds me of like the Mother Earth symbol. So I think it all lines up. So after about five breaths, bring your arms down. You can drop your leg. Give your legs a little bit of a shake. Okay. We're going to do the exact same thing again on the other side. So again, just finding your rooting, finding your grounding, finding your drishti. Off we go. Making sure as well to pull the scapula back, your shoulder blades, so that your arms aren't pulling you forward, you're not falling forward, but they're sitting nicely. If you find you're having any speed wobbles, just focus on your drishti, press your big toe into the mat. And don't forget to breathe. And again, after about five breaths, bring your arms down, relax the legs, give them a little shake. Very good. Okay. 
from exactly where you are. We're going to do a nice easy one now. So it's the forward bend, okay? So in this one, um, as I say, it's easy, but probably not as easy as it looks either. It's fantastic for relieving stress and anxiety and even depression um, because it calms the mind and it soothes nerves as well. This is one that I actually do every morning when I wake up and I just think it's fantastic for stretching out all the back of the body. Um, it stretches out the hamstrings, the calves, stretches out the spine, but I just feel instantly calmer, especially if I wake up like, you know, busy or anxious or anything like that. I find it fantastic. So um, with the forward bend, what you want to do is you want to bring the shoulders back, first of all. So we can do that by placing our um, hands on our hips. And you can actually even place them kind of like on the back of the hips there. It brings the shoulders right back and it, strength, it, it, it straightens the back. Um, as I said at the beginning, you're always going to have a natural little uh, curve in your spine. That's normal. That's absolutely fine. Just as straight as possible. And just be very aware of, again, your scapula, your shoulder blades, because they're usually the giveaway if your posture is bad or if you've got rounded shoulders. There's something that you want to bring back. So you kind of want to like stretch the chest area and bring the shoulder blades, blades back. So with the, seat, with the forward bend, uh, naturally you're, you're falling forward. So what you want to do is make sure that your feet again are hip width apart. Mine are probably a little bit more than that just to allow room for baby. And I'm not going to go all the way down. But what you want to do is go as far as you possibly can while keeping your back straight okay so I can get to about here at the moment <laughs> um, you're probably able to get further and if you can even grab the instep of your feet and I feel as well the longer you stay in this position the more the muscles actually loosen out and the deeper you end up going. So where you begin at the start of the posture isn't usually where you actually end up at the end of it. Even if it's just for a couple of breaths, you'll notice yourself sinking down further, which is really good. I should have mentioned as well guys I'm um I'm not doing too many rounds of each uh posture just because you know it might be different if I actually had um somebody here in front of me to to train I've just been doing a, like a couple of breaths on each one if you'll have noticed just so I can demonstrate um several more um I thought that made more sense but if I if I was in a class, I would do more repetition of each pose, definitely. Also to try and fit it into the 40 minutes, which I'm just seeing the time is half an hour, so I'm probably gonna go a little bit over. <laughs> okay, so um from your forward bend, so obviously I've been facing you guys so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, but you guys have probably been at the start or at the front of your mat, so some stahiti. And from this um, position, we're going to now um, either jump or step back to downward facing dog. So I'm just gonna step back. And from your downward facing dog, you can go into child's pose and just take a little rest. So that's basically you're kneeling down, bringing your arms down by your sides, your palms facing up, and you can curl up 
my own adaptation is having the hips open and I just lay down like this. So this is a nice pose for beginners at any point in the practice if they feel like they're tired, um, lethargic and they just need a little bit of a break. It's just a really nice restorative pose. It also brings you into awareness of your mind. And again, calming and soothing. Okay, from child's pose, again, back up to downward facing dog. And then you can jump or step forward into the cross leg position. Okay, so we're gonna do some, um, we're just gonna sit actually in staff pose, okay? So again, bring your feet out in front of you. And again, this is one of these ones that looks really easy, but does take a little bit more <laughs> than it seems. Um, so you need to have your legs together. Uh, make sure your knees and your ankles are in alignment. Um, bring your feet all the way back. Uh, so you're flexing your feet, which extends your heel. So again, extends your heel. Pulls out the calf muscles, which is really good. So stretches the back of the legs. And in this one as well, um, it actually calms brain cells and provides resistance to hip and back uh, injuries. And you'll see why now. Because next we focus on the hips. And again, making sure that you straighten your back. Again, you'll have your little natural curve, but your back's as straight as possible. And then you've got your arms so your hands flat next to you on the mat and you're looking straight ahead. Again, make sure you're breathing. Nice deep inhales and exhales. With that one, I think you can even feel it in your back instantly when you're doing it. It's so good for strengthening the back muscles. Um, okay, so from our staff pose, we're going to go into a seated forward fold. And um, so this one's very good for soothing, soothing headaches, which again is associated with that kind of stress, anxiety, um, energy. Uh, so it helps to relieve a lot of that. So seated forward fold. You're already in your position, so a nice deep inhale, stretching all the way up, bring your arms right up as if you're reaching for the ceiling. And on the exhale, just like we did in the forward fold that was standing, you're bringing your body as forward as you can, keeping your back straight. Obviously, I'm very restricted at the moment, so I'm not showing you the best, but if you can imagine, your hips are almost like um, a pivot. So your hips pivot over and your back basically flops down and you should almost go like in half. <laughs> so that's the idea. Um, so I'm going to go as far as I can and I'm going to do five uh, breaths, but hopefully you can go further than me.
Okay, so from where you are, um, we're actually going to do the wide angled seated forward fold. Um, I'm going to turn and face you just because I've got more room that way, but you can just open your legs from where you're sitting. Okay, you can go as wide as you possibly can. And this is basically the same, but literally with your hips open. So again, flex the feet means that you're extending the ankle, you're stretching the calves, you're stretching the hamstrings. Um, and this one again is very good for calming and very good for uh, removing stress and anxiety. I know I keep bringing it back to that, but I really do like to have a focus in whether I'm doing a therapy, a meditation, and I'm gonna bring it into yoga as well. I think it's important to have a goal um, in your practice. Okay, so exact same. Nice deep inhale, arms up, and exhale. And again, you'll be able to go a lot further than I can right now. Um, so bring your arms down in front of you, obviously flatten the floor and keep your back straight and if you can imagine bring your tummy down onto the floor rather than imagining bringing the tip of your nose down onto the floor if you can imagine bringing your tummy and then your chest then it brings it from the right place rather than if you were doing it from your head you'll end up kind of curving over so you want to avoid that Keep the shoulders dropped and keep the legs flat on the floor as well. So there's no point in being able to get flat down and having your legs like this. You want to keep them straight on the floor and be patient with this one. This, this comes in time. You can lean into it. You can bring your elbows down. As your tummy and your chest are starting to drop. Just like I was saying earlier with the, the forward fold as well, after a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes, your body gets used to it and you start to um you start to go deeper than you initially started the pose in. So inhale all the way up. Just do one more of these. Counting your own five breaths. Whenever you're finished, your five breaths. You can sit up straight, but stay in your wide-legged position. Okay, so our next pose is butterfly pose. So this is actually a lovely one for pregnancy. I actually love doing this one. Um, so bring the soles of your feet together and just simply holding on, grasping your feet. Again, keeping the spine nice and elongated. Facing forward, chin parallel to the ground. Drop the shoulders, shoulder blades back. And you can even move your legs Move your knees up and downwards if you like. So this one's fantastic for stretching your inner thighs, your groins, your knees, and again helps with anxiety and fatigue. Remembering to breathe. So 
So anything that works on the hips is really good for grounding in general because that's where our um, our root chakra and our, our sacral chakras are just above it but that's where our root 